Hello, hello, hello there. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? Hey everybody, who's all out there? Let's see. Vamos a esperar unos minutos. We'll wait a few minutes and then we'll get started. Amen. How are you doing? You doing okay? How's your family? Familia, ¿cómo está? worship with me. Come on, Yeshua, come in this place. Feel this room. Feel this place, Lord. We need you tonight, Lord Yeshua. We need you tonight, Lord. We need you tonight, Yeshua. Yeshua. I just come before your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord God, for your anointing, for your power, for your grace. Thank you for your spirit that is just in this place so sweet, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your word of truth. I pray that it minister to your people. Father, that you teach your people today what you want to say, Lord God, to all of us. Father, thank you. Use my mouth as your vessel. I just glorify you today, Yeshua. You're welcome in this place. Take your word where it needs to go, Father. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Oh my goodness, that song. Ooh, Lord, thank you. Yeshua. All right. So, welcome for all of you who are connected. Amen. God bless you, keep you, and protect you, and shine his face upon you, and give you his peace. I know today I'm covering my, my head for a specific reason, so don't worry. But anywho, I pray that the word of the Lord ministers to you today. We are going to be talking about Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. That's where we're going to get started tonight. 
Um, before I get to talking about this word, um, let's let's read it. Amen. I am a firm believer on reading straight out of the scriptures and then um, talking about what it says so it can minister to us. Amen. So go with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 24. And this is what it says. Therefore God, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Um, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions for even for even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise. Also, the men live in the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind or deprivated mind or perverted mind. For those of you who are connected that do not know what that means to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they are whisperers backbiters haters of god violent proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such thing are deserving of death. I want you to hear carefully. Not only to do the same, but also to approve of those who practice them. Let's jump into chapter 2. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such thing and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory honor and immortality but to those who are self-seeking and do not and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish on, on every soul, I want you to hear carefully, on every soul, hang on a second, of men who does evil, of the Jews first, and also of the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, for there is no penalty with God. For as many as have sinned without law also will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. Okay? For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. 
who showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of man by Yeshua the Anointed One according to the gospel. So here, what I want to bring to, to our attention, okay? And I'm going to go into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in a minute. What I want to bring to our attention is here God is specifically talking about the things that are unpleasing to him. God is specifically talking about why the wrath of the Lord comes upon men. Why the wrath of God boils into the earth. Why, you know, um, bad things happen. But one of the things that I want to focus on this particular scriptures about is when God is talking about the law. Notice that God says those who, who do not have the law, okay, who never were introduced to the law, they're going to die without the law. In other words, if you have never been introduced to the word of God and you have never fulfilled the word of God in any shape, way, or form, you're still going to die without the law, okay? But those that were given the law, meaning us, those that were given the word of God, those that um, walked in the word of truth, we, two things are going to happen here. We are either going to be judged by it or we are going to be justified by it according to our obedience to it, okay? And then it goes further and says, the Gentiles who were not given the law, okay? And notice here that God makes a distinction in saying first to the Jew and then to the Gentiles. Remember that Yeshua came to save first the Jews and then the Gentiles. It was open to the Gentiles after the fact because the Jews rejected Yeshua. But notice here that Yeshua said, listen, okay, um, all these things are going to come up first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, okay? Now, being a Jew does not mean, does not, is not people that say, I'm a Jew, okay? Being a Jew is of heart. God has given you his word in your heart. You know to do the right thing, but yet if you don't do the right thing, amen, then God has the ability to judge us based on, our, on the truth, based on his word. Amen. So here God is saying, listen, I want to point some things out to you. If you were given the law, then you're going to be either judged by the law or justified by the law. If you were never given the law and you die without it, then it is no gain, no, no pain, no file. Not, you know, it's not going to be held against you. If you die without it, it is what it is. You die without the law. Okay. But if you are a Gentile, you are doing the word of truth. You are walking in the word of truth because the Lord has wrote it in your heart to do the right thing, not to commit adultery, not to cheat, not to do evil things, not to be evil minded, not to speak evil of people, etc. As the, the scriptures pointed out in Romans chapter one, amen, not doing the unnatural thing as a woman. And a man not doing the unnatural things as a man. There is a nature that God has given us. Each one of us, whether you're male or female, there is a nature about you that God has given you. And you cannot go seeking unnatural things to fulfill that. Because if you go seeking unnatural things to fulfill that, then you are going to receive the judgment on the day that the Lord decides to judge you. Amen. So here God is saying, I want to bring back to the forefront what I look at when it comes to judgment. I want to bring to your attention what I am evaluating in your life, in your walk, in your mind when it comes to the truth, when it comes to judgment. Okay, now I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to show you something. And this is so important. I want to show you something. If you're a child of the Most High God, you are walking in the truth of the Lord. You are fulfilling the commitments of the Lord. And this is you. I want you to hear what the Lord is saying. 
all right lord i guess i need to take off my my covering amen and this is what it says second corinthians chapter 10 starting in verse 1 it says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, the anointed one, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. Okay? But I beg you, you that when I am present, I may not be bold with the confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, when you become obedient to the word, when you are walking in the word of truth, when you are walking in the commitments of the Lord and you begin to apply and walk in it, you are ready to be able to judge disobedience of people around you the disobedience of people uh, that god has given you each one of us have been given people amen you are a person of influence whether it is in your family in your community in your friends there is somebody looking up to you even if it's just your kids there is somebody looking up to you and in doing so you as you become obedient and mature in the Lord, you have the ability to judge rightly based on the truth. Just like we do with our children. When they do something wrong, what do we do? We pop them. Why do we pop them? Now we know better. Now we can teach them that's wrong. That's a form of judgment. So you, as you mature in the Lord and you begin to walk in the word of truth, when you are in obedience to the word of truth, you can judge other people's disobedience. Amen? Let's continue on because I want to show you something. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? Are you looking at what I look like in the flesh? Don't be looking at what people look like in the flesh. That God ain't, that has nothing to do with the word of truth. Amen? If anyone is con convinced in himself that he is Christ, in other words, that he belongs to Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed lest I seem to terrify you by letters. For, for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak. And his speech, contempt, uh, contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that while we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. In other words, what Paul is saying here, he was saying, listen, don't be, don't misunderstand authority by the appearance of a person. He's saying, I have authority. I am a very powerful man in the Lord and I can boast in that. However, though, when you see me in presence, I seem weak. I am, I am quiet. I don't sound like I have such authority. You know, it's, it's interesting because majority of people that, that know me, I'm very quiet, I'm very reserved. When they see me, they might think, oh, she's weak until they hear me talk about the word of truth, amen? Why? Because it's not about physical appearance. Okay, having authority has nothing to do with what you look like. 
you can be the biggest which is uh, I don't I didn't know the Lord was gonna take me here but I'll share it with you you know just like when God chose David okay what what was that about okay David was the least in his family even his father was like David you mean to tell me that David is gonna be king he was tiny in body he was short he did he he was not a muscular man he was taking care of the sheep okay his father's sheep in the field <clears throat> but his brothers were warriors they were built to be warriors they they have been in the battleground the whole time so when God chose David no one not even his family members thought that David was gonna be king hey Sherwin oh it's so good to see you my friend God bless you a Grenada, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, keep you and protect you, amen. But when God chose David, even his family was like, wait a minute, David? Samuel, I went through all of his brothers. And he was like, well, Jesse, I don't know what to tell you. You don't have any more children? And Jesse was like, yeah, David? David, but David is, you mean to tell me that David is going to be anointed king? Yes, David. <clears throat> I need David to come over here because so far I've looked at every single one of your sons and the Lord has told me none of them are going to be king. So if you have another child, I need, I need him out here. I need you to bring him to me because this ain't it. Amen. So a lot of times People underestimate. Thank you, sis. I appreciate your comment. People will underestimate your ability and your authority in the kingdom of God because of what you look like. And God doesn't choose people based on their outer appearance. God choose people based on what's already on the inside of their hearts. Can I use you for the secrets of my kingdom? Can I take you to high places in authority? Can you keep my secrets? Can you bring my judgments according to my word? Can you set people straight according to the truth in love? Can you do that? Can you not think of yourself if I give you authority and power to be more than anyone else? Can you stay humble? And so when God chooses people to have authority, who are obedient to the truth, amen, he chooses the people that, he chooses people that most people would not choose to have such authority and such a power. So here Paul is saying, listen, I'm writing you with a lot of power and a lot of authority in my, in my writings, in my letters, but I know that when I'm in front of you, I'm very quiet. I'm very, you know, I'm very, um, I, I kind of stay to myself. I'm not, I'm not up front like that. I don't, I usually don't like being around people necessarily. Okay. But I do have authority in the spirit of the living God. Don't get those things confused. What I look like in the natural and my personality in the natural is something completely different from my authority in the supernatural. Amen? So, absolutely. Absolutely. And how many times have you tried, and, and this is interesting that you brought this point up, but how many times have you tried to accomplish something for the Lord and people who you think are in authority shut it down? No, you can do that. That's not part of your gifting. Well, who are you to tell me what my gifting is? If the Lord has blessed me with a gift, if the Lord has given me something to do and I'm sharing it with you, it's so that you can use it within your congregation. But a lot of times, the ones that are gifted, the ones that are anointed, the ones that have authority in the kingdom of the Lord, get kicked out. Amen? Get kicked out. So, what I want to bring to you today is this. If you have been anointed of the Lord, have been chosen to be a carrier of the spirit of the living God. If you are obedient to the truth of his word, 
okay? Then you have the ability to judge people according to the word, not according to what you see, not according to what you think, according to the word. According to the revelation that God has given you, you have the ability to correct and judge people according to the fruit that they are producing. Amen? So a lot of times, you know, we we really, I'm going to tell y'all, there's a lot of us who don't understand the power and the authority that we hold, that we carry. And thank all of y'all that are sending all the hearts and the love on this video. Amen? A lot of us don't understand the power and the authority that we carry because we allow other people to determine that for us. But I am here to tell you, okay, that if you are a carrier of the Spirit of the Living God and you have the anointing of the Spirit of the Living God, amen, then you have the ability, once your obedience is fulfilled, like the scripture says, once your obedience to the word of truth is fulfilled, as the word says, then you have the ability to distinguish among the people around you. You also have the ability to stand in the gap for those that are baby Christians, amen, who, who don't have it yet. They're not sure where they're going. They don't know how to walk in it just yet. You have the ability to intercede. You have the ability to stand in the gap for them, amen. But the reality of it is, okay, God looks at what we do. God looks at our hearts. God looks at our mind. Just like he says, I will judge you based on my word. If you are a Gentile today and you have never been given the law, but yet you follow the law, meaning you don't commit adultery. You don't, you don't kill. You don't have strife with anybody. You try to live at peace with everybody. You keep, you keep the Sabbath, which is one of God's commitments. If you keep God's commitments and you are walking to the word of truth and you are a Gentile today, the Lord says you are going to be able to judge those who say that they are Jews. You are going to be able to correct them. You are going to be able to judge them because they were given the law and they broke it. And they broke it. So as the word said tonight, in Romans chapter 2, for those of you that are connected now or will connect later, we are speaking out of Romans chapter 1 and Romans chapter 2. You are, you are more than welcome to read it for yourself. There's nothing that I am giving you extra. There's nothing that I'm adding. There's nothing that I'm taking away. It's simple. The wrath of the Lord comes upon all humans based on the disobedience to his word. And those that walk in the word, keep the commitments of the Lord, have the ability to stand in the gap and intercede or have the ability to judge. Amen. Now I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 10 because I want to show you something. Luke chapter 10. And this right here is going to minister to some people. Amen. And it's going to correct some of us. Amen. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 21. This is what it says. In that hour, Yeshua rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. In other words, Yeshua reveals himself to whoever he pleases, for those of you who are connected. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? 
what is your reading of it? In other words, Yeshua was telling him, if you want to get eternal life, you have to do what the law says. Have you read it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, don't we love to justify our behavior? Amen. Said to Yeshua, and who is my neighbor? Then Yeshua answered and said, a certain man went down to Jeru from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. A priest, y'all. A bishop. A pastor. Amen. Could be an evangelist. A priest. A teacher of the word. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. A Levite was a priest chosen back in the Old Testament to teach the word of truth for those of you who don't know. All right? But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took, our two, he took out two denaries, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. In other words, in other words, my beautiful people, you can be a pastor and teach the word, but yet miss what it means to take care of God's people. You can be a Levite, meaning a chosen priest of the Lord, like it was back in the Old Testament. The Levites were the only ones that were supposed to be priests, chosen by God to be priests according to the law. Amen? You can be a Levite. You can be a Jew. A Hebrew for those who are connected. Amen? Know the law. Walk in it. And still miss what it means to walk like Yeshua. What it means to love your neighbor. So today, I'm bringing all this together to say this. As a child of the Most High God, you have authority and you have power to judge. You have authority and you have power to intercede for the people around you. But you also have the ability to heal, to mend, to restore, to help those in need. What am I telling you today? What I'm telling you is this. Understand what it means to have power and authority. Understand what it means to walk in the word of truth. Understand what it means to love God's people. As the scripture said, you can have the law. You can walk in the commitments of the Lord, yet see somebody in need who is wounded, who needs your help, and walk right past them and don't even notice their pain. Some of us can be so puffed up in the spirit that we can see 
our brothers and sisters wounded by priests and pastors and evangelists and prophets used and abused by the same people that say that they walk in the truth and the Lord said which one of these do you think was a neighbor which one of these do you think walk like me which one of these do you think apply the word of truth the one that had mercy on the wounded on the pain of others on the hurt of others and did what he could to help to uplift to empower to mend those things that were broken Amen, sis. So tonight, what I want to tell you is this. When you have, in order for you to have authority and power and walk in the authority and power of the Holy Spirit, you have to be walking in the commitments of the Lord. Once your obedience is fulfilled, once you become obedient to God's commitments, once you walk in God's truth, you have the ability to pray, to judge, and you have the ability to have mercy on people. Just like the Lord told Moses when he was going to deliver his people, he told Moses, Moses, you don't get to choose who I have compassion on. You don't get to choose who you minister to. You don't get to choose who you deliver because some of the Egyptians left with Israel. Amen? They converted because of all the miracles and the judgments that they saw of the Lord. So the Lord was letting him know ahead of time. I know that there are people that are going to follow you i know that there are people that are gonna come out of egypt and they're not gonna be considered jews they're not gonna be considered the israelites or the hebrews but moses you don't get to decide who you have compassion on you don't get to decide who you give mercy to i get to decide that god told moses and the same thing with us we don't get to pick and choose who we minister to. We don't get to pick and choose. There's a lot of a lot of churches that have these cliques. And if you're not part of that clique, it's a problem. You don't get to choose who you minister to. God has mercy on whom God deems he wants to have mercy on. God has compassion on who God deems you need to have compassion on. And God chooses who you minister to. We don't get to choose that. There are people that I have ministered to that have scared me. But God said, no, 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 no. Don't reject no one. Don't push aside no one. No one. If I bring them to you, it's for a reason. If I put them in your hands, it's for a reason. We don't get to choose who we minister to. We don't get to partake of scriptures, one here, one there. The ones that feel good and the ones that don't, we leave them aside. It's a complete package. Either we, we do the work of the Lord or we don't. But don't get to pick and choose because of that. People blaspheme the Lord all the time. Because we get to pick and choose. We get to decide who needs judgment and who doesn't. Make sure that when you are judging someone, make sure if you are a child of the Most High God and you're seated in authority, and you have power in the Holy Ghost. Make sure that you leave judgment in God's hands. Sometimes you have to say, because God will give you the ability, and you have to say, Lord, I, I don't know. 
you're going to have to come into the situation and you have to be the judge in this situation, Lord. In the meantime, I'm still going to give the person mercy. I'm still going to stand in the gap in prayer until you come in and you decide what you're going to do with that person. Amen. They could be hurting me. They could be punching me in the face. But at the end of the day, the judgment belongs to the Lord. If you're not sure on what, on how you are supposed to judge someone and you are empowering the authority of the Holy Spirit, you put it back in God's hands and you say, Lord, wait, hold on. Uh -uh, I, I'm not sure about this. You're going to have to give me either more understanding on the situation for me to decide or I'm putting it back in your hands and you deal with it. Amen. Amen. Amen, sis. So today I want to just come in and give you the word of truth. If you are a priest or a pastor, an evangelist, a prophet, and no matter what name you put in it, a servant of the Lord, we need to understand our authority. We need to understand our power. And like Paul said, I know I'm that way. You know, which is interesting. When I read that, I, I kind of was taken back by it. I'm very quiet. I'm very reserved. You know, um, I'm kind of off to myself. If you see me physically, I don't talk to everybody. I don't. I don't approach people like that. But when the word of truth comes through, boy, I have a power and authority that I'm something to mess with. Amen. But the thing is that that authority and that power belongs to the Lord and we have to know how to use that for God's glory and and for God to come in and take his rightful place amen so tonight I wanted to give you the word of truth and from now on on my messages that's simply what I'm gonna title my messages is the word of truth because that's all we need you don't need my opinion, I don't need your opinion. We got plenty of that going on around the world right now. We need the truth. We need what sets us free. We need what delivers us, what heals our very soul. Amen. So tonight, I pray that this word has ministered to you. Amen. That it has empowered you, that it has shown you something about yourself. Because trust me, I'm sitting here teaching the word, but God is talking to me too. Because everything that's coming out of my mouth is coming from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, you know, take the time to read it for yourself. And if sure that I shared earlier in the Bible that says, do not wait for the Lord to judge you. But evaluate your life, evaluate your decisions, and you look at yourself through the word of truth in a mirror to see if what you see is reflecting the word of truth. If it's not reflecting the word of truth, then evaluate yourself and figure out how to change those things that God is not pleased with. Amen? But don't wait until the Lord comes knocking at the door to judge you. Judge yourself. Think yourself. Think of the, of the thoughts that you think about. Think of the things that you do. And if you have the ability to change those things, then begin to walk in it. Begin to change those things that God is not pleased with. And I, plum I promise you, I am a living testimony that the peace of the Lord that will come upon your life and your house. It's something so priceless and so tangible. Amen. So with that being said, I love every single one of you. May God keep you. May God bless you. May God shine his face upon you and give you his peace. And for all of you that connected tonight, thank you for coming by and just taking a little bit of your time to listen to the word of the Lord. Amen. If the Lord allows me to, I'll connect with you again next Saturday. Spanish at four and English about six usually. 
I connected a little early today, amen? But come on in, just sit here, and let's just eat together of the word of truth, amen? God bless every single one of you, and I'll talk to you later. And Sherwin, if you're still connected, God bless you, brother. I so miss you. And I pray that this word has ministered to you the way it has ministered to me and the way it has ministered to Tish because I know this word has ministered to the both of us. Amen. So I talk to you guys later. Y'all have a great weekend. I love all of y'all and I'm always praying for you. Talk to you later. Bye.